Hello and welcome to this new wire wrapping tutorial for beginners. So this time we're going to make another ring, um, a bit more elaborate but still quite easy and uh, ideal for a beginner. I will guide you step by step, don't worry, you don't really need to know anything about wire wrapping. Um, so uh, this time we'll make a slightly bigger ring than last time and we will include amethyst chips which I will show you closer. So these are real amethysts and they are drilled so they have little holes so that they basic they're basically beads so we can easily incorporate them in our design. And amethyst is a really beautiful stone, it's one of my favourites. I really love it. So what else do we need? We need one millimetre wire, which for short I will call thick wire in the video. And then we will need 0.3 millimetre wire, which for short I will call the thin wire. We will need pliers, different kinds of pliers. I will tell you more about the tips and um, why do we need specific tips for different kinds of jobs. And finally, this tool, which is I don't know what it's called, but it's like a um, tool to measure the size of the rings. But also we will need it to uh, help us make the shape, the round shape of the ring. For the purpose of this tutorial and this ring, we will use uh, bare copper wire, so not coated. Um, there are several reasons why I prefer this wire. Um, it's basically it's easier to to work on because it's quite soft and it won't make your hands hurt compared to the, for example, um, sterling silver wire, which is much harder uh, and it will will make your hands and fingers hurt. And um, I don't really like working with coated copper wire, which is soft, but the problem is when you work with it and when you pinch it with your um, pliers, it will scratch the surface of the coating surface, revealing the copper underneath, which is not pretty. Um, also, when we have made a piece of jewellery with bare copper wire, we can, if we want, um, antique it with liver of, liver of sulphur, which gives it a very, very nice brown colour, which I really, really love and I use with all my creations. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we want to do is to determine how long the um, thick wire will have to be. So first of all, we need to decide, we need to determine what size the ring will be, more or less. It will be an adjustable ring, but for aesthetic purposes, it's better if we decide what size we want it in advance and then work with that. So my finger, the size of my finger is around six and a half or seven US measurement. So what I will do is just to determine, we will cut it later, but just to determine the size, I'll just wrap this around without cutting it. Here's the six and a half, seven. And then I want to make 
three loops a bit more than three loops actually I think this is probably a bit much okay this is probably how I want it so why am I doing this I want this to be the central part of the ring where the beads the amethyst beads will go and then this will be the top loop and this will be the bottom loop and I'm leaving a bit of a tail here so that I can later curl curl them to make them prettier so I will leave a bit of a tail here a bit of a tail here and then I will cut the wire here and now I will just straighten it so that I can first of all I can work on it normally and then I can use this size this this wire to decide the size of the other wires with my flat pliers I will straighten the wire so that it looks much better when I start working on it And then I will need two more of these bits, <clears throat> same exact length. So I'll just use the first one as a template. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to mention, I need to use these cutting pliers to cut the wire. <clears throat> Straighten it with my fingers and help myself straighten it further with the flat pliers okay so we have two and now we will cut the third one exactly the same size with these pliers, the cutting ones. Okay, straighten and straighten again with the flat pliers. All right, so here we have three bits of thick wire which are all more or less the same size and now we will need to cut quite a long bit of thin wire 0.3 millimeter I'm not measuring this I'm just cutting a long bit because I w we will need quite a lot and anyway don't worry because if we run out of thin wire while we are weaving we can always cut a bit more uh, that's not a problem at all so just just cut a fair long bit all right so this is a quite a long bit of thin wire okay Okay, so let's dive into it. We will take the first bit of thick wire with one hand and then with the other hand, the thin wire, and we will need to leave this little end about this much free. We can just use it to hold the thick wire. And then with the thin wire, we make three little loops. 
around the thick wire like this. Three little loops and make sure that they are all nice and close to each other, they're all touching each other, so that will look very neat. We don't want that, we don't want it to be, we don't want a gap between the three little loops, we want them to be very tight. Okay, and now we take a second piece of thick wire and we add it to the, at the top and now we make another three loops but this time around both wires one two three okay again again we want it to be quite tight we don't want any gaps between the loops and now the third wire goes on top like this and now we want to make three more loops but only around the second and the third wire so we'll, we will leave the bottom wire alone we won't wrap anything around it now we just need to make little loops around the top two wires one two and three and we always want to end the loops with the wire going towards the back okay so the loops basically mean that we're, we're putting the we're wrapping the wire to the back and to the front to the back and to the front and when we finish the third loop we want the wire to stay at the back if that makes sense so we are do we have done the first half of the v shape that we need for our pattern for the ring and now we need to do the second half of the v-shape so we're basically going downwards what we need to do now is with the wire at the back we have to make three more loops around the bottom two wires one two Three, always being very careful that the wires are nice and tight and there are no gaps between them and now to finish the first V shape upside down V shape uh, we need we need to make three more loops around only the bottom wire so it's nice and symmetrical oops here I have little gaps but I can tighten them with my fingers or alternatively with the flat pliers I just push the thin wire to make it tighter okay so now I've made three loops around the last the, the sorry the bottom wire and the first V shape is finished I will need now to repeat this pattern I will show you on camera one more time another V shape another tile of our pattern so that hopefully it will make things clearer bottom two wires three times By all means, feel free to pause the video, rewind it if you need to see the process again. If I'm going too too fast, I'm trying to slow down, usually I go more, uh, much faster, but I'm trying to slow down 
to give you the chance to see it properly. Um, so I've wrapped the bottom wires now and I'm going to the top ones. Top two wires. Three times. And then bottom two wires again. And only the bottom one. Okay, so we've made two tiles now, two V shapes. So now that I've wrapped a bit more, you can really start seeing the, pa the pattern a bit better. All the upside down V shapes. And I want to uh, wrap it like this up until roughly this point. So roughly half the length of the wire because that's where we will put our amethysts so let's wrap it let, let's wrap the thin wire around uh, up until this bit half and then i'll see you then okay so now i've wrapped the thin wire around the thick wire more or less until the um half half the length of the thick wire it's actually a bit less but it's fine less than the half but it's absolutely fine um so i got to this point where i've wrapped three little loops around only the bottom wire to finish the v shape and now what i'm gonna do is i want to use three amethysts one two three and obviously for symmetry purposes i want the bigger bigger one to to sit in the in the middle of the other two so what i'm going to do is i take the first little bead as you can see, it has holes, it has been drilled, so it's literally a bead that you can slide through the, the wire. So I'm just putting the, the thin wire inside the hole, let it slide. And now I position the bead here pressing it against the main structure of the ring pressing it against the three thick wires and making sure that it's really nice and tight I make two actually sorry three loops around the bottom I'm sorry <laughs> three loops around the top two wires making sure that everything's nice and tight we really want it to stick to stick to the ring to the wires okay so now i've made three loops around the top two wires and now i'll carry on making two sorry three loops around the bottom two wires I'm getting confused with numbers now. I know exactly what, how many times, and blah blah blah, but saying it gets a bit um, confusing. So we're doing three loops around the bottom two wires, okay? And we really want to make sure again that this is quite tight. It doesn't matter if it moves around a little bit because once we've finished the ring we can secure it a little bit more with a bit of glue this is not going anywhere it's just a bit fiddle it's just a bit wobbly 
moving around a little bit and we don't really want that so that's why we're probably in the end going to use a tiny bit of glue at the at the back but that's it the 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 stone is secured to the ring that's not going anywhere so now three more loops around the bottom just the bottom wire like so and then we take the middle stone the middle amethyst bead and again we slide it slide it and then we position it very close to the the other one to the first one and with our finger with our thumb we um, press it against the wires and we wrap the thin wire three times again around the top two wires making sure that everything's nice and tight if we want to make it tighter we can use this flat plier see it's not incredibly tight but it doesn't matter too much as long as it's as tight as you can but then as I, as I said we can secure it with a bit of glue later so we did three loops around the top two wires and now three loops around oops the bottom two wires And now three loops around just the bottom wire. And finally, the last bead. Again, we make it slide like this. We secure it with our thumb, press it against the wires. And we again make three loops around the top two wires, three loops around the bottom. Oops, this is not tight enough. Let's just tighten it a bit. Three loops around the bottom two wires. It doesn't look great at the moment. Again, as we secure it with a bit of glue, it will look much better. That's only optional, by the way. As I said, there's no need with this technique, with the wire technique, um, there's usually no need to use any glue whatsoever. The only reason sometimes I use it when I'm using beads uh, is because of this. I just don't want them to move too much. And finally, three loops around the bottom wire alone. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have secured all the beads to the main structure, we just basically carry on doing this pattern until more or less here making sure that this little end that we will not wrap around it um, making sure that it's symmetrical to the beginning so it's basically the same size as the beginning more or less so I'm just as a demonstration I'm just doing one more v-shape on camera bottom two wires
top two wires. Bottom two wires. Just bottom wire alone. And now I will carry on until this point off camera and I'll see you in a second. So now what's happening here? I am running out of thin wire. Um, I haven't cut enough, apparently, but that's absolutely fine. Um, I just need to cut this little tail and then get some more thin wire. So I'll show you how to do that. With the cutting pliers, I cut this little tail as short as possible. Okay, now that I'm doing this, I want to cut the tail at the beginning as well, as short as possible. Okay, now, with these pliers, sorry they are a bit rusty, they, um, it's probably too much liver of sulfur solution that touched them, but they still do the job very well. So these um, pliers, all these ones, it's the same, they have the same purpose. The only thing is these are a bit more comfortable, in my opinion, because they have this little curved shape but basically they serve the same purpose the what's important is that they have these teeth um, at the end so with these pliers what we do is press the tiny tiny little ends against the wire to prevent it from stinging whoever is wearing the ring We need to make sure they are really pressed against the main thick wire one. And on this side, oh, this side as well. Okay, so now we can also touch, uh, touch these two ends with our fingers to check if they are actually not stinging. And then we just cut a bit more 0.3 millimeter wire oops so oh, sorry this this was just going loose okay we won't need as much as the first time we'll need just a bit more And then we just carry on by putting the new thin wire wherever we need it to carry on with our design. In this case, I need it on the bottom wire to make two more loops and then carry on. with the bottom two wires and on and on with our pattern that we already learned. Whenever I start a new wire, I make sure that to make, just to make it more comfortable to me to work with, I just make sure that I press, I hold the little tail, the little end against the, um, the main structure so it's just easier to work with the rest of it you're just keeping it secured and in place top two and so on and so forth right up again right up until this more or less this 
bit. All right, so um, now we've basically finished the wrapping bit. So as you can see, we have a fairly symmetrical ring structure. So we have these two ends that are fairly symmetrical, these two mm, we, wo wo woven, <laughs> wrapped bits uh, that are fairly symmetrical. The amethysts are in the middle, so we're pretty happy with it. And now what we'd have to do is cut these little tails of the, um, the thin wire, as we did before. So with the with the cutting pliers, we cut the tails as short as possible. And here too. Hold. Okay, and with these <clears throat> pliers with the little teeth, we just press the the little te the little ends against the rest of the structure so that we don't sting anyone. All right, now what do we do? We take the ring measuring tool. We have to remember the size that we started with. So mine was six and a half, seven uh, US ring size. We place the middle, the, the amethyst bit, the bead bit against the front of the tool. And we start curling the ring around the tool so that obviously one bit, one half goes towards the top and one half goes to, to the bottom. Now I must say, well, we will fix these amethysts later, but I must say I'm still not happy. I'm not happy with the ring because I want the, uh, the wrapped bit to be more visible. Um, so I want to carry on wrapping on both sides. So what I'll do is I take a bit more a bit more thin wire Cut. and then starting with one side I carry on wrapping until I would say at least this bit at least underneath the central bead. I carry on wrapping so that basically this intricate design is visible at the front as well. So I just, as I would do normally, stick the thin wire between the second, the, the, the middle and the bottom wire and just do two loops around the bottom wires. Actually, sorry, three loops around the bottom wires. Three loops around. You can straighten it a bit if it's easier. You can always uh, make the shape again. Three around the top wires. 
and so on and so forth until you reach more or less here, which is more or less the middle, corresponding to the middle um, bead. Okay, and now I do the same with this other bit. Now that I've finished both sides, I will just cut the ends as we did before. And then make sure that they stick nicely to the main structure of the ring and they don't sting whoever is going to wear it. Okay, now let's make the shape again because now we've twisted it a bit while while working on it. <clears throat> so let, let's make the shape nice and round again with our tool. Okay, so now the ring is almost finished. We only need to curl these ends to make them look prettier and to do so we will need this round shaped tip here and what we do is we start with the wire which is further away from from the middle grab the very end as close as possible to the very end of the wire and then we start curling and really this depends on your taste um, you can curl it as much as little as you want you can make the shape basically however you like it it's just a way to embellish it make it even prettier and also of course avoid these bits of wire to stick out Keep it like this for now, I'll do the other half and then we'll see what it looks like on on the finger and make adjustment, adjustments if we want to. Okay, so now we'll have a look, we'll, we'll put it on the finger and we'll have a look. So obviously it needs a bit of adjustment. Um, I don't really want this to stick out like this so two things that we can do one is we make this bit more round so it goes it sits nicely on the finger and this bit as well we can try and just with our just with our fingers make it a bit more round instead of flat even with the help of our tool maybe Okay, so it's already already better 
we can always adjust it around our finger looks pretty okay to me but one more thing that we could have done and I'll show you now for the tutorial purpose is flatten it flatten it a bit again and then make the loops a bit more a bit closer to the center Yeah, looks quite nice like this. Closer to the center. Which doesn't look bad at all. Um, so that it's a bit more wearable this way. Can always adjust it around your finger or adjust it around the tool and that's basically it thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked the tutorial if you found it useful please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel um, where you will be able to find more tutorials like this one also, if you are curious to see my other wire creations, um, you can follow me on Instagram, on my Etsy page where I sell my creations, on Facebook. Uh, all the links will be in the description below. Thank you so much again.